when when we when you call someone, you state your name and where you're calling from, and or even when you answer the phone at work, and then if you're calling someone, you always ask them, do you have a minute, or do you have time to talk? Speak clearly and be very articulate. Uh, don't use the speaker phone unless you let the other person know. People hate to, to be heard publicly if they don't know about it. When you transfer a call, make sure to let the other person know where you're transferring them, to who, and give them a number to call if they get disconnected, especially if you work in customer service. And make sure to tell them that you're transferring them. I say that sometimes I need to speak to someone and they just, without anything, they just transfer the phone. Or they put you on hold. Even if you're gonna put someone on hold, tell them, may I put you on hold? And then you keep coming back to them. I don't know if your phones ring after a certain time or not, but it's very irritating when you're left on hold and you're forgotten. So you need to come back to this phone. Watch loud voices, limit the cell of use phone, and when you put people on hold, always say, uh, I will. And when you talk to someone, ask them, when you want to help them, don't say, can I help you? The proper term, especially for customer service, is may I help you, not can I help you. Do we know why? Can has a negative connotation to it. You say, can I help you? They'll respond with something like, I sure as I hope so, or something like that. Exactly. Can means that I'm in control. I can choose not to help you. But may I help you? Grammatically or English-wise is more proper and it has more respect. And it comes from the, actually the English literature more than the American literature. So it's may I help you, not can I help you. Uh, don't use jargon or don't use expressions that is only common to your industry or your work. Because I do not understand what IT people tell me. I am not an IT person. So I cannot understand what's a, a motherboard and, and, and SPUs and and I'm not a doctor that I understand if someone tells me nephritis and hypertension and hypothyroidism. People need to use simple words, especially people use a lot of um, acronyms or they use a lot of, oh, I work for uh, uh, PW. I know what PW is because my husband works for public works in LA County. But if you, if you tell someone that I work for PW, for BWP, or for BWP, they have no clue what that is. It's very normal to you to say that, but they don't know what you mean. So you need to actually explain yourself, you know, to the person that you're talking to, who you're talking to. Very bad quarter and power. The voicemail etiquettes, when you leave someone a phone call, how many times you play phone tags with people? So when you call, you tell them who you're calling, why you're calling, leave a number and tell them you will, what time you're gonna be available, what days. So you want to keep playing phone tags so people can call you at that time. When you have a voicemail, in February, I still hear people saying, I'll be away for Christmas and come back the first week of January. Their email addresses still answer, I'll be back on the 2nd of January, in March. So be careful with that. If you are someone that goes on the field different days, renew or, or change your voicemail every day. Say, I will not be in the office till 3 p.m. today. I will have very limited uh, use of phone. So people would not assume, oh, I left you three messages in two hours, and you didn't answer me back. I wasn't here, or I, I was on the field. So you need to let people know so they will not assume that you will return the call uh, right away. These are, uh, this is a fun thing that I put for you on your book, so you have it. It's how to keep uh, a customer call. It's like telling them thank you and hello and good morning. Thank you for being our customer. What can I do for you? May I help you? We appreciate your business. You have it in your workbook. If you have a video or audio conference and they're becoming more and more uh, usable these days, make sure that before the time of the conference call or the video call to test everything. The worst thing that happened, and it never fails, that you're ready to go and something goes wrong. So you need to make sure to test everything. If you are using different time zones, be careful with that. You don't wanna call someone when it's seven o'clock where they are, seven a.m. or 11 p.m. where they are. So be careful with the time zones. 
uh, adjust the picture and dress professionally because again, if people are on video, then it's like exactly if they are around you there. Uh, the meetings we have, the meetings have before, during, and after. So before the meeting, if you're calling for a meeting, you need to send an agenda so people can come prepared. The worst thing that can happen when I'm in a meeting and someone calls on me for certain information that I don't have. And I will hate them for that. Because I could be prepared if you give me advance notice. I don't want to look incompetent because I'm not. But you didn't give me the courtesy to let me know in advance what you're going to need in the meeting. And it loses everybody time. Because if you go to a meeting and you don't know what you should present and you don't have it, it's a waste of everybody's time. So you need to have an agenda, you, have, you need to set, and when, when someone, stand by the door when someone walks in, actually greet them. I have the agenda and the paper or pens or whatever around the room, make sure that everybody has it. Uh, when you start the meeting, start it always on time as respect, if people are late, it's on them. So you need to have respect for the people that are already there on time. And present yourself, preview the agenda, and say, we are gonna finish in an hour or at 10 or at 11. I mean, you, all, you, you put the parameters and boundaries of what you're gonna do. During the meeting, make sure that everybody says an opinion. There are people that sometimes like hug the whole conversation, so make sure to go around the room and ask different people to, for, their, uh, for their opinions so that will feel at least valued. After the meeting, always send like uh, minutes, small minutes, or even bullet points on what happened. And if things are pending, send them to the people concerned and tell them we expect you to come back to us with these items at this time. Uh, cubicle. If we work on cubicle, we need to understand that that cubicle is like an office. So do not start a conversation at the edge of a cubicle. If you are in someone's cubicle and they receive a phone call, excuse yourself. Before getting in and you hear that they are on a phone conversation, don't get in. Leave them a stick on note or, or send them an email. Don't have loud voice on the next cubicle. Don't have a high ring tone of cell phone on the next cubicle. Don't speak loud. Don't carry personal conversations inside of your cubicle. And do not eat food that is pungent in the next cubicle. Remember, cubicle is a private space. And don't touch things, and don't barge, don't interrupt, and uh, don't eardrop either. And don't have very strong perfumes. And again, it's an open space, but it's still your private space, and you have to deal with it for others that way. The email etiquettes, remember, because of the email, we have new terms. So we have netiquettes. Netiquettes mean the, the network etiquettes, where you are polite, you don't, uh, attack people, you don't insult people, you don't have jokes that can offend people. Netizen is a citizen on the internet. Flaming is when someone starts having a war with you and it flames the situation. So when someone tries to flame you, do not, especially if you are like on a Facebook or a Twitter account of the company, do not respond to flaming. And then cyber culture where Avoid sexism, avoid offending remarks, avoid anything that is culturally offending, anything that is about ageism or about gender. Avoid all that because at the end you only, not only represent yourself but your company. And you can say that I can put whatever I want on my Facebook page, for example. I want you to know that there are people that got fired or did not get hired because of things they had on their Facebook page. And there are companies in the beginning that used to ask you for your password on Facebook so they can check what you have on your Facebook. Isn't that illegal? Congress, yeah, Congress already issued like a mandate where they can't do that anymore. But they still go to your, web, to your Facebook page and, and uh, you know, they can go and, and check your, if, you, if you don't have the privacy settings. So they do check that. They check your Twitter, they check your LinkedIn. So be careful. Whatever you don't want your grandmother to read, don't put it on any of your social media networks. There is nothing called privacy on social media. And I, and I don't mean that you're gonna get hacked. I mean, even if you put a, a comment or a tweet and you delete it in 10 seconds, it could have been already gone viral in this few seconds. So be careful, be mindful of whatever you have on your social media. 
Uh, emails do and don'ts. Uh, do not write everything in capital. You don't have to CC all all the time if it's something that. How many times you got annoyed because everybody's like reply all, reply all, reply all. Yesterday I received an email and it was sent to like 100 people. 50 of them hit reply all, please remove me from the email list. Why do you need to hit reply all for that? You know, so be careful with that. Uh, mind you, the words that you use, your spelling, your grammar. So always check that before you send it. Uh, make sure that, remember, this is a legal document. So what you don't want to be seen, do not put it in an email. Always have a subject. I received a lot of email professionally sent that have no subject. So I don't know what is this even about. So be careful in writing your request from the beginning. Have a salutation from the beginning. Have thank you at the end. I receive emails that are like one word, yes, no. Let's stop. It's just, you don't have a minute to say hi or dear, thank you. It's, pro it's part of your etiquette, part of your email etiquette, and actually manners, professional manners. Always end it with thank you, and don't let, if you get an email that was not supposed to come to you, let others know that you received it by mistake. So that we send it to the proper people. Office boundaries, respect everybody. If you have, if you're working with disabled people, there are actually a full etiquette for disabled people. So if you have someone that is on a wheelchair, uh, if it's uh, an electric one, don't stand in front of them till you're sure that they kill the power. So it won't run you over because they have, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a car. Uh, when, don't assume that they need your help. Ask them first if they need help. So don't go run and call the elevator for them and don't assume that they want you to push them and don't assume that you want them to open the door. Ask them, can I open the door for you? You know, or can I, do you need some help? Don't assume that people that even that are blind or with a kid that they need your help. Sometimes they don't and they can get offended if you just impose it on them because they look at themselves as capable people. If you're gonna talk for a long time with someone on a wheelchair, get to the level of eyes. So either get another chair and sit in front of them or kind of bend your knees so you can be at their level. Don't put your hand on them. Don't put your hand on their shoulder. You know, they're not something that you can like, basically like stand on. Don't touch them unless they tell you it's okay. If people have service dogs, don't pet the dogs. These are service dogs, they're working. They're not for you to play with them or to pet them. And people are very peculiar, by the way, about their, their service dogs. So just, they are actually working, like working human beings. Uh, speak your mind, but polit be politically correct. Professionalism, be professional at work. Uh, don't ask a subordinate for something to do for you that you won't do. Or something to do like, if, if you, and I saw it one time, a manager was passing by in a hallway and she told her subordinate, oh, pick up those papers on the floor. Why don't you pick them up? You know what I mean? So it's just like, don't ask someone to do something that you won't do. Uh, do not gossip and or engage in office politics. Uh, don't use the office equipment for personal reasons. So don't use the copier, the fax machine, uh, your private emails, and I know it's common and everybody does it, but it's not properly correct. It's not office uh, etiquette. Avoid emotional outbursts. Uh, don't use offending language. And there are people that use words like sweetie, honey. Don't use those words. This can lead to a sexual harassment lawsuit. So be careful. Uh, do not groom yourself in public, so don't groom your nails or clean your ears or comb yourself, uh, and don't go over your supervisor head. This can come back and hunt you. Unless you are in a, a grievance from them, and it's, it's, it's a different story, but don't, if you wanna share an opinion, share it first with your supervisor. 